Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get your free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv or click the link in the video description down below. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and welcome aboard the A26C-45 Invader. This is the rank 4 premium battle rating 5.3 A26. We now have a couple in the standard tree as well which is excellent as this was always a rare event plane although it is far more common these days. Armaments are of course 8 12.7mm M2 branding machine guns with 2,600 rounds of ammunition and two dual 12.7mm branding machine gun defensive turrets with 2,000 rounds of ammunition. And for today's match, as I am going full ground attack, I am carrying the 500 pound bomb load. This is 10 500 pound bombs, four bombs on external fixed mounts underneath the wing and then six bombs in the internal bomb bay. So while I am flying the invader in today's video, it is actually not the focus of today's video. Today's video is about grinding. Obviously we have a new patch now, patch 1.71 is now released and most of us are either grinding out the new vehicles in order to try them or we are grinding through the vehicles that were already existent in the tree trying to get to the new vehicles that we are interested in. One way or another, the majority of players at this moment are grinding their way through the tech trees in some form. So I'm going to be talking primarily about the air trees, not the ground trees for today, and what is the best way to grind through them. So. The first thing to consider is not everybody plays on exactly the same level. Some people play a much better game than others. The most efficient way to grind is whatever you're best at, because that will always generate you the best results. Bit of a cop-out answer, I know, but it is the first thing you need to take into account. However, all things being equal, what is the most efficient way of generating RP and credits in War Thunder at this moment? Well, it used to be exactly what I'm doing here. Taking out a ground attacker of some form, going into a battle and hitting, primarily dropping off your bombs on the area bombing targets, as you would, taking out the bases or any tank columns that you can find depending on what loadout you've got. And then using your direct fire weapons, whether it be machine guns, cannons, doesn't matter, it depends on the attacker that you've chosen for the nation that you end up grinding, to take out as many soft targets as possible. We're talking trucks, artillery positions, AAA, as much as you possibly can. If you're lucky, you'll get the bonus of shooting down a couple of aircraft while you're at it, but even if you don't, hitting large amounts of ground targets gave you a very good base score, which once the multipliers were added in for the match, would tend to result in rather high credit and RP earnings. Now just to be perfectly clear, this wasn't the best way to generate the maximum amount of RP that you could potentially generate in a match, but it was the most reliable. You could easily outpace anything in terms of RP grind that you could do in a ground attacker in a fighter, but you would need a reliable two to three kills every single match in order to do it. A sustained two to three kill per match kill rating, which is actually quite difficult for some people to be able to achieve. Meanwhile, flying out an attacker and shooting 15 to 20 soft ground targets with machine guns and dropping some bombs was something that pretty much anybody could do and do with an acceptably high level of reliability. Unfortunately, as I said at the start of this description, is this is how it used to be. Now, while certain parts of that are still intact, it is much easier to reliably generate a score with a ground attacker over a fighter, providing you select an appropriate ground attacker and are versed in its usage and how to engage in air combat or avoid air combat where is necessary. The actual results I've been getting out of using ground attackers as grinders has been reduced over the last couple of patches and here in patch 1.71 it does feel like they are significantly worse again. So when assessing how efficiently an aircraft is operating when you are trying to grind, this is not talking about when you go out and just play the game and have fun and happen to earn some credits and RP across the way that's going to unlock you another vehicle, but when you are specifically taking out a vehicle for the sole purpose of generating as much RP and credits as you possibly can in order to unlock a vehicle that you're interested in. When it comes to playing for fun, unlocking the vehicle is just a bonus, but specifically grinding. There are three things you need to remember when selecting a vehicle to grind. The first is how much RP can you generate on average with this vehicle in the manner that you're planning on flying it. The second is how many credits can you generate under those same circumstances. And the third, and this is the most important one and the part that I find that most people tend to forget, 
how long does it take to complete the match on average? Now this is actually the most important part, time. It's fantastic if you have an aircraft that you can fly out and with reliability go and smash out a 15,000 RP round. That's going to make your grind really fast. But if it takes 25 to 30 minutes in order to complete the match when you are pulling off that kind of a round, yet in the same time frame, you can go and fly an aircraft that only gets 8,000 RP on average per match, but only takes about 10 minutes in order to generate it. You can fly three matches for every one you're flying with your big aircraft. Automatically, in terms of efficiency, the smaller grind is actually the more efficient into generating large amounts of RP at a high rate. And this is actually where my ground attack technique that I've been using for as long as I've been playing War Thunder has actually come unstuck. Over the course of the match that I am currently playing, I'm going to kill 36 ground targets and bomb out two bases, while getting an assist on one aircraft that tries to attack me with one of my defensive gunners. The result of this match, I'm going to make 81,686 silver lines, and I'm going to come in with 14,681 research points, of which 11,325 will be transferred through to the P51H5NA, which is my current research project. Now this is by no means means a bad result in the slightest. It just has one small problem. It took 24 minutes and 57 seconds to complete this match. And on average, the ground attack missions take around 18 to 20 minutes to complete. Now by comparison, prior to flying out the A26, I actually flew out the P-51D-20NA, which is the 4.7 battle rating American premium P-51D Mustang. As you can see, in this match I earned 27,533 silver lines significantly lower than what I earned in the A26, but I made 10,295 research points that were transferred through to the P51H, not all that much less than what I made in the A26. The difference is the P51 match required me to only get two air kills, and only lasted 12 minutes and 37 seconds. On average, my air combat battles are lasting between a 9 to 10 minutes sort of range, out to a maximum of 15. This means on average I can pull almost two matches for every one that I fly in the A26, leaving me with a little over half the credits that I could have potentially earned for the match, but almost doubling the amount of RP that is going into my research target. So, where in the past I've always found that doing a ground attacker and doing sustained attacks like this over time, in the long run will net you more RP and more credits, that seems to have changed now. It's still the best way to grind credits, and it's most certainly a far more reliable way of grinding credits than it is in a fighter, largely due to sustained availability of targets to hit, and as an added bonus, all bombers and attackers generally have a significantly lower repair cost than their fighter counterparts, meaning if you don't happen to survive the match, the loss of the aircraft is going to impact your earnings at a much smaller rate. However, on the RP front, it just seems at this point that not only is the potential maximum RP that you can earn definitely in the hands of fighters, where it has always been, but the ability to generate sustained RP over time is also now firmly in the hands of the fighters. The only thing that the humble ground attacker really has in that regard now is it is a relatively relaxing way of earning the RP. I quite enjoy flying around, it's very cathartic flying around at low altitudes like this trying to dodge fighters, I kind of enjoy it. But again, this folds back into the fun category that I discussed back at the start of the video. So again, as I said back at the start of the video, different pilots in War Thunder will fly in different ways. Some will be better in some areas than the others. That being said, it seems that most people will have better luck in a fighter, both for sustained grind and looking for those big scores, in order to earn RP to unlock their next vehicle. But if you're looking to make money to purchase it, you want to get a ground attacker out. Now, just a couple of final things to note before I bring this video to a close. Yes, in this video I am using a premium account and I am using premium aircraft. This means my scores will be bigger as the premium aircraft and the account adds a multiplier to the end score that you achieve during the course of your match. However, if you do not have a premium account or a premium aircraft in which to grind, the multipliers in the match itself are exactly the same. These are just something that's added on the end. So while your net scores will be lower than mine, you will still find the same thing across the board. You'll find your ground attackers will generate more money 
than your fighters generally will, your fighters will tend to generate more RP. So select your vehicles accordingly. Second thing to mention is, as I'm sure most of you have noticed on any of these videos, or in fact on most of them, I have a tendency to play alone. This is again largely due to grind performance. If you are playing with somebody and you happen to get shot down at the start of the match, you have to sort of wait for your partner to finally get out of the match before you can re and get into your next battle. In that downtime, you are not earning credits or RP. While flying alone, however, as soon as your aircraft is lost, you can immediately quit the match, jump back into queue, get your aircraft back into another fight, and immediately get back to grinding. This minimizes the amount of downtime you have, and you'll be amazed that over the course of three to four matches, that little bit of downtime waiting around is a fifth match that you otherwise wouldn't have had time to put in. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. A lot of experienced pilots, of course, are going to know this already. This is more a little bit of a help for the new guys because I haven't done an update on this in quite some time. I will have some reviews on the new 1.71 vehicles coming up extremely soon and a brief look at the overall quality of patch 1.71. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to check out my sponsor, Audible, in the video description down below. Fantastic service. You really should check them out. And also, if you're looking to support the channel directly, my Patreon link is in the video description below as well. Until next time, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies.